Hi, welcome back to Tina Ranks Every Broadway Musical, February edition. I know I said last month that I was in the process of making another video, and then the entire month of February flew by, and now it is 12.53 a.m. on March 1st, and I haven't touched any video editing software at all. <laughs> so, channel trailer it'll come eventually maybe i hope you may hear bridgerton and other talking in the background i i feel like there's there's never a good time when i can record stuff because you know upstairs neighbors are always making noise roommates are always watching tv or something so i tried waiting for it as late as possible but now i myself am tired so i cannot hold it off any longer but anyways broadway to a day challenge yes uh, that is a thing that is happening. I made a little talk about it in last month's video, so if you want to check that out. Um, otherwise, we're just gonna hop right into it. <laughs> Catch a star. We're already off to a great start. There is no known recording. This is an L. Finian's rainbow. A leprechaun must find his pot of gold buried in a small town before it disappears and becomes human. The music is really enjoyable. Uh, the song Begat stands out, and so does Necessity. There is a moment in the show where a white man gets turned into a black man, which does not fare well in modern times. Um, all in all, the music is great. It's a shame it's horribly racist. Uh, I give it a C. Up next is Phoenix 55. It's a musical review. Uh, we managed to find a few songs which were very enjoyable, but since we only found those few songs, I have to give this an L. The Most Happy Fella. It's Catfish, but with more drama. Why is it so long? I wouldn't mind it being two hours, but it was just so incredibly dull. And Tony's voice in the original Broadway recording aggravated me for whatever reason. This is an F. Shangri-La. A man ends up in Shangri-La when his plane crashes and he considers staying. We've had a few songs and those songs sounded very pleasant, but once again, this is an L. Lil Abner. The small town of Dogpatch is fated to become a nuclear testing site unless the townspeople find something remarkable about it. Also, there is a magic potion that makes you super strong that the government is trying to get their hands on for whatever reason. Some of the songs go on for a little bit too long, but I really enjoyed the music. It was super catchy. I didn't expect there to be a theme about genetic modification on humans, but I was very welcome to it. This is a B. Bells are ringing. A woman at a call center falls in love with one of her clients. The songs in Act 1 are fun and charming. They kind of show slices of life from all these different characters. It's more when the show moves into a standard Act 2 that it begins to be less interesting. This is a B. Candide. The titular character keeps getting into disasters and must flee around the world. Meanwhile, Maximilian and Paquette just will not die. The book underwent a major overhaul in 1974, which is the version that most productions use today. I expect nothing less from Leonard Bernstein. The slower pieces made me take pause to listen in and the up-tempo songs are really enjoyable. I give it an A. Happy hunting! A mother tries to set up a marriage for her daughter to outdo Grace Kelly and drama ensues. I remember none of the songs. I made note of one because I liked the ending, but even now I can't remember it. This is a D. New Faces of 1956. It's a musical review. The opening number has the quote, Theater started in the ring and it's been going in circles ever since. And I really like that. The songs are great too. And I like listening to Tiger Haynes. This is an A. Cranks. It's a musical review. The music has jazz elements and I'm a sucker for a good clarinet feature. The songs had a lot of charm and quirk to them. I'm so bummed it's not on Spotify. Otherwise, I would have immediately added it to my favorites. This is an A. Shinbone Alley. A cockroach and a cat form a friendship. Yes. That is the actual setup. I wasn't so sure about the first few songs, but by the time the Moth song came around, I was very much interested in the music. There's also an animated movie of this, which makes me just go, why? My, my brain breaks at the storyline, but every other part of it is otherwise fine. This is a B. New girl in town. A woman returns home to live with her father while hiding the fact that she used to be a sex worker. Also, she falls in love with a sailor. The music was somehow predictable and yet I still can't remember a single song from it. This is a D. Ziegfeld Follies of 1957. It's a musical review and we have no recording of it. This is an L. Simply Heavenly. It's a bunch of small stories in a bar. The blues were so refreshing to listen to, and most of the songs were really catchy. I enjoyed the show while listening to it, but thinking back, I can't remember anything from it. This is a C. West Side Story. 
Romeo and Juliet are retold through the lens of two rival gangs in New York. This show remains in the canon for a reason, and that reason is the music. It's iconic and such a unique sound. Some of the lyrics are a little bit questionable in today's time, and I'd really like for high school theaters to stop doing it if they can't appropriately cast it, but that is a non sequitur. This is an A. Copper and Brass. A cop and a jazz musician fall in love. And that's all we know because there's no recording of it. This is an L. Jamaica. A woman dreams of leaving the island for New York City but falls in love with a fisherman who saved her brother. I definitely listened to it. I think it was good, but nothing in particular stood out to me. This is a D. Rumble. We have two songs from it, which are not terrible. This is still an L, though. Mask and Gown. It's a musical review featuring female impersonator T.C. Jones. I think it's a recording of the show in its entirety, which is a nice change from other reviews, but I had a hard time getting invested in what was happening. There was some mocking of the industry, which I am always here for, but I couldn't stay interested. Also, this show is only available for purchase on iTunes and the audio quality is not the greatest out there. Ultimately, I couldn't finish listening to it. This is an F. The Music Man. A con man sells a small town instruments to form a band and falls in love and mischief on the way. I love the music. I know this is a divisive opinion since there are a lot of people who despise this show, but I really enjoyed it. Some people are up in arms because of a certain Aheb bug beverage musical. Uh, but while others think the show is boring, I'm not here to say any of those people are wrong. I definitely think this show is a relic of its time, but it's not in any offensive way. I... I don't know. I, I give it an A. Sorry, music man haters. The Body Beautiful. A Dartmouth graduate becomes a boxer. And also, love happens, I think. I really enjoyed the music of this one. Standouts are Just My Luck and A Relatively Simple Affair. I'm really disappointed that it isn't on Spotify because otherwise it would go straight to the favorites. This is an A. Oh, Captain. A sailor travels between his English wife, who wants a wild life, and his Parisian mistress, who wants to settle down. The music was fine enough, but nothing really stood out to me. This is a C. Annie Get Your Gun, a fictional retelling of the life of Annie Oakley. Listening to I'm an Indian Too in 2021 is very much... Yikes. The rest of the music is fine enough. I would say only the infamous Anything You Can Do stands out, and even then, it's a little bit irritating. Sorry, folks, I'm not a fan of this one. This is a C. Portofino. Drama ensues in the town of Portofino. We have exactly one song from the show, and you know, I quite enjoy it. It has a very jazzy sound to it. But regardless, this is still an L. Say, darling. An adaptation of a book about how the musical Pajama Game was written. Very meta. The music is fine enough, but nothing really stood out to me. This is a B. Really? It's a B? I mean, I had to give it a B for a reason. Well, I'll, I'll leave it. I won't change it. Mm. Carousel. Drama ensues at a carnival. This one is going to be a bit controversial, but I thought it was just okay. I might have to give it a second shot later, but nothing about it really stood out to me. And also, the Act 2 turnaround definitely caught me by surprise. I was definitely not expecting that. This is a C. Goldilocks. Contrary to what you think, it's actually about an actress who has to fulfill one last contract with a movie producer and love ensues. I enjoyed listening to it, but I couldn't tell you anything about the songs. This is a C. A party with Betty Comden and Adolf Green. It's a musical review with Betty Convin and Adolf Green. I know a lot of people hate musical reviews, but this one was really enjoyable. I think this is partly because the recording also includes the dialogue that Convin and Green give before each song, which really enhanced the listening experience. This is an A. Maria Golovin, a blind man and the titular character fall in love. I think. It's an opera, so I wasn't exactly paying attention the entire time. However, it wasn't a painful experience, just a very long one, and the ending actually had me very shocked. This is a C. Whoop Up. Drama ensues at a saloon in Montana. This one isn't available to listen to in the US, so I had a fun time listening to some songs via Discord voice chat. I think it was fine. Again, I don't really remember it. Uh, this is a D. Juno. An Irish family goes through hardships and it's very sad. 
I quite enjoyed this one. Some of the songs in it are super great while others are a bit more slagging. Over a week later, I found a bit from You Poor Thing stuck in my head, which was rather unfortunate because it's one of the more annoying songs and I only remember the response part and not the call. One review by Stephen Suskin stated that some of the songs suffer for trying to be too Irish and I have to agree with that. Regardless, this is a B. First impressions. It's Pride and Prejudice, but with slightly more emphasis on the mother. Again, I really enjoyed listening to it in the moment, but I couldn't tell you anything about the songs, except for maybe something involving five daughters. This is a C. The Nervous Set. A couple explore New York City and their dysfunctional marriage. I don't remember listening to it, but I think I enjoyed it. If you skip the one super problematic song, it's a pretty decent experience. I give it a C. Really? A C? Oh, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> Redhead. A girl tries to solve a murder mystery in a wax museum. I really enjoyed the music. It was a very pleasant surprise. I'm tempted to listen to it again because I want to give it an A, but I don't remember much about it. For now, this is a B. Flower Drum Song. Love and drama ensues in San Francisco Chinatown. The music is good. Enjoyable, even. It's very much like The King and I, where the music is stellar, but the book is so questionable, especially as an Asian American. David Henry Huang tried to create a new book to go with the songs, but it wasn't well received. And to that I say, let's just make new musicals instead of trying to redeem old ones that should just be left in the past. Just a suggestion. Anyways, this is a B. La Plume de Ma Tante. It's a musical review, but French. I'm sorry, by the way, I don't speak French at all. Um, anyway, but regardless, no recording has been found. This is an L. <laughs> Gypsy. A mother lives to show business life vicariously through her two daughters. I think there is a major reason why this musical remains so prevalent today, and that reason, of course, is the music. It has charm and wit, and it stays in your head for a good while. The title is rather unfortunate in light of today's world and context, but a poorly aged title does not a bad musical make. This is an A. Happy Town. Uh, Brooks Atkinson wrote that Happy Town is profoundly uninteresting. No one can beat pleasure into it. There's no recording. This is an L. Destry rides again. I think there's like cowboy drama. The Wikipedia synopsis is much too long for Act 1 and way too short for Act 2. I wasn't so sure I would vibe with another Western musical, but I actually really enjoyed this one. This is a B. Take Me Along. Drama ensues in Centerville, Connecticut. I actually recorded my thought process while listening to the show, which I will now summarize as follows. Wow, I hate it. Okay, I don't mind it. I'm vibing with it a bit. Oh, yikes. Yikes. Okay, back to semi-vibing. I will be so glad of the day when we don't have to use cultural analogies in poor taste. This is a C. Little Mary Sunshine. Forest rangers and Native Americans have a dispute over some land in Colorado. Yeah, we'll talk about that part in a bit. The music in this one is interesting in that each song is a parody of songs from other operettas that came before it. If you are a fan of operettas, you might enjoy it. If you're not, you might still find some of the songs enjoyable, as I did. Now, about the book. It's kind of a big cultural yikes. An unsighted Wikipedia quote claims that it lampoons everyone, but does that still make it right? Mmm, nice try. This is a C. Fiorello! A man named Fiorello La Guardia runs for mayor of New York, and also falls in love, I think. I actually kind of like the music in this one. A few songs are flops, but overall quite enjoyable. This is a B. Saratoga! Okay, so do you know the plot of A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder? It's kind of like that, but it's set in Louisiana instead. I had to check multiple sources to confirm that I did indeed listen to this, and I typed this part up the next day, so I don't remember anything about it. This is a D. Beg, borrow, or steal. Beatniks in the 1950s fall in love. Thanks to the incredible power of a Discord member, we found the recording of this show under the title of Clara. The music doesn't necessarily stand out, but it was a pleasant experience. I give it a B. Green Willow. A man wants to settle down in his hometown where everyone is required to leave and explore. It was incredibly dull and I couldn't care to pay attention to it. This is a D. Christine. A woman travels to India after her daughter dies and ends up falling in love with her son-in-law. Yeah, the music was horribly boring too, so there's literally nothing you can do to redeem this show for me. This is an F. At the drop of a hat. 
it's a musical review. Some of the songs are really charming and fun. Uh, for those of you who are listening on Spotify, for whatever reason, some of the dialogue loops, so beware of that because it does detract from the experience. Uh, this is a B. The Girls Against the Boys. It's a musical review, and we have no known recording. This is an L. The sound of music. A governess teaches a family to sing and also falls in love, and also Nazis are involved in Act 2. <laughs> Uh, the show is iconic for a reason, and the music is so memorable. I'm sure for a lot of people, this was their introduction into musical theater. This show was mine. Nostalgia aside, the sound of music is going to be here for a long time, and I'm glad for it. This is an S. From A to Z, it's a musical review, and we have no known recording. This is an L. Once Upon a Mattress. Based on the fairy tale, a princess must sleep on 20 mattresses with a single P underneath to pass a test so that she may marry the prince. The music is quite enjoyable, but I'll be honest, I personally don't vibe with it as strongly as I maybe should. Sorry. It's still a B though. Bye bye birdie! A music star gets drafted for the army and also teenagers fall in love and drama ensues. The music is fun and catchy, but once again, it's not really my vibe. This is a B. Erma la douce. A cop and a prostitute fall in love and then the plot just goes wild from there. One song had a fun drum fill and the music in general was fun, but I ultimately remembered nothing from it. This is a C. Tenderloin. A reverend tries to clean up a part of New York called Tenderloin and by clean up, I mean clear out the sex workers. I listen to the show today, right now, as I'm recording this, and I couldn't tell you anything about the music. This is a D. And last, and probably least, Wildcat. A woman tries to become a leader in the oil industry. I, I don't know what it is about Western shows or Lucille Ball, but I could not stand this one. I'm sure it's probably a B for most people, but I really wasn't feeling this one. I'm so sorry. Uh, this is an F. And that, my friends, covers every single Broadway musical from 1956 to 1960. <laughs> the 1959 to 1960 season is like massive for whatever reason, so it took up a lot of space. Well, I guess Tenderloin and Wildcat are technically 1960 to 1961 season, but... <laughs> We're getting to pedantics, that doesn't count for anything. March, we're starting to get into the 60s, aka the more fun, popular musicals. I'm glad I'm still going strong two months into this challenge. Uh, I don't know how long I'll be able to do this. I'm hoping that I can do it for the whole year, as I do with like other things, but you know me, I abandon projects in the middle of them for no reason. So we'll see what happens. I am going to edit this. Maybe work on the channel trailer. It'll come out eventually, I promise. And then I'm gonna go listen to more musicals. Okay, bye. A <laughs> uh, side note, my glasses are in the way of it for most of it, but can we just take a moment to appreciate my eyeshadow? Because I worked really hard to like make it this like cute little rainbow thing. And then I put on my glasses and it's like, ugh, gone because of glare or whatever. Ugh. <laughs>